Now we're going to talk about one of the most well-known species in all of human evolution, the Neanderthals. Neanderthals are really cool and they're well known um, probably because they're just younger than other species. So it's more likely that there are still fossils left of them. And they also, you know, lived in Europe where most of the researchers already live. Um, so lo looking at our map here, Neanderthals are right here. So relatively recent and very closely related to us. Um, so this is the species Homo neanderthalensis, the first uh, one that was discovered in 1856. Um, this specimen is called Feldhofer 1 um, because it was discovered in Feldhofer Cave in the Neander Valley. Um, this first specimen, there was a skull cap, two femora, a couple arm bones, um, an ilium, a scapula, and a couple rig rib fragments. Um, but really, the most interesting part was this skull cap. And this is what led people to believe that it was a human um, or human like rather than, you know, a bear or something else. Let's talk a little bit about its name, though. The scientific name is Homo neanderthalensis, um, and you'll notice there is a TH in the middle. However, when we um, write the common name, it can be Neanderthals with or without that T. Um, this is just a weird linguistic note. So when it was originally named, German had a lot of silent H's in its language. Since then, it's, German has actually removed a lot of those H's. So that's why in the common name, we can remove that H. However, because scientific names are, you know, super superficial and all that. Um, it was named with the H and it will forever have that H. But when you say it, it is a hard T, Neanderthal. Make sure you say it correctly. Otherwise, you'll make me very sad. All right, on to the real stuff. Um, so Neanderthals were really cool. They lived um, between 400 and about 30,000 years ago, um, mostly in Europe, but also in the Middle East and as far west or uh, sorry, as far east, I know directions, as Mongolia. Um, so you can see here, they had a pretty wide range. Um, and overall, they appear to be a little bit more cold adapted than some of the, you know, African species. Um, so let's look at some of these, these traits here. You can see they don't have a chin, but they have a pretty big brain, but they still have that kind of long and low kind of football shaped heads going on. I um, mean, you know, have the double arched brow ridges, um, just like kind of big face. Um, they had mid facial prognathism. So the nose and the hair, just all of it was pro uh, a little bit prognathic, unlike Homo erectus, where the nose was kind of pushed back, but it's just that subnasal thing. Um, they have a relatively large justamaxoid eminence, um, and they have this occipital bun in the back. Uh, but let's compare a couple different things here, and that'll make it a little bit easier to understand. So Archaic Homo sapiens has an occipital torus, Neanderthals have an occipital bun, and then anatomically modern humans, where it's just kind of pathetic, nothing really much there, we have an occipital protuberance. We can also look at a couple different other traits. So Neanderthals have this retromolar space, so they still have a big jaw, but their teeth are smaller, so there's a little, a little bit of a space in the back we do not have that. Our teeth are small, but also our jaw is small, so there's no extra space. And still, we don't have enough space. That's why most people have to get their wisdom teeth removed. Um, you can also see Neanderthals do not have a chin. We have a little bit of a bump at the very front of our jaw here. That is our chin, um, but Neanderthals are missing that. Um, and you also actually see modern humans have a much larger mastoid process there. Um, probably, uh, we think that's just because there's a l greater degree of flexion in the skull, because you can see the Neanderthal skull is still longer. So the anatomically modern human kind of looks like we just kind of squash the Neanderthal um, skull, uh, the cranium, a little bit. Um, if you look at it from the back, you'll also notice there's a few shape differences here. So in Homo erectus, it's widest at the bottom. In Neanderthals, it's widest in the middle. And in Homo sapiens, us, it is widest at the top. Um, so all relatively minor shape differences, but these do help um, identify it when you're trying to compare different crania. Um, but let's think about their postcrania here. So uh, we have a lot of different material for Neanderthals. So we've been able to get a pretty good picture of the entire body. Um, Neanderthals were um, about the same height, maybe a little bit shorter than us, um, but 
and you can see here their rib cage is a little bit different. So they, it's a little bit of A-line, not quite as extreme as, you know, our Australopithecus. Um, but in modern humans, our rib cages are like, we generally describe it as barrel shaped. It's really just straight up and down on both sides. Um, but the upper part of the rib cage is a little bit narrower in Neanderthals, which gives this kind of A-line shape. Um, what we think is in us, we actually expanded those upper ribs, so it, um, we're the weird ones. Um, and you will notice their pelvis are a little bit wider. Um, and for whatever reason, the bottom of the rib cage does tend to match the pelvis in size. So you, that's also why the lower part of the Neanderthal rib cage is a little bit wider than us. Um, but uh, all of their other proportions seem to be very similar to modern humans, long legs, shorter arms. Um, so here's some material from LC drawn in Spain. Um, so here is, you know, their butchery marks on Neanderthal bones. And some people like to say this is evidence for um, cannibalism, possibly. Um, it could also be, you know, ritualistic burial. But I, I don't like to make any strong conclusions about this. But the, it is certainly possible that um, cannibalism was happening. Um, but let's, let's talk a little bit more. In general, when we're looking at Neanderthals, we find lots of injuries, lots and lots of injuries, and lots of injuries that have healed over, so they were able to get through these injuries. And the, the job that has, has the most common um, type of injury are rodeo, rodeo riders. So this indicates that Neanderthals were in very close proximity to very large animals and were probably getting tossed about. Um, how we generally interpret this is they were probably hunting pretty large game at pretty close proximity. Neanderthals had pretty advanced weapons, but they did not have projectile weapons. So we think they were using thrusting spears to get at, you know, woolly mammoths. That's kind of dangerous. So that's probably why we're seeing so, um, so many injuries from them. We also see that they have a pretty highly variable diet. So there, um, at this point, there is definite evidence for hunting, but they're also eating a lot of different plants. And when available, they're also hunting small game, such as rabbits. Um, we also, interestingly, see um, some very diagnostic teeth wear. So you can see in their incisors, their incisor is actually pretty worn. Um, so they are using their teeth as tools probably to hold a hide as they're skinning them. So we're um, with Neanderthals, there's evidence for fire, there's evidence for shelter, and there is evidence for clothing. And my favorite piece here is we do find a couple individuals um, with pretty severe injuries. So here is an individual where he has lost the lower part of one of his arms. Um, and when that happens, the, the, the upper bone just kind of atrophies because you're not really using it that much. Um, and this would be difficult to get by on your own. So when we see individuals who've healed or have lived with severe injuries like this, that means the other individuals in their community are probably helping them survive. You may have already read, heard this quote um, from Margaret Mead. She's a famous cultural anthropologist. Um, so years ago, anthropologist Margaret Mead was asked by a student what she considered to be the first sign of civilization in a culture. The student expected Mead to talk about fish hooks or clay pots or grinding stones. But no, Mead said that the first sign of civilization in, in an ancient culture was a femur that had been broken and then healed. Mead explained that in the animal kingdom, if you break your leg, you die. You cannot run from danger, get to the river for a drink, or hunt for food. You are meat for prowling beasts. No animal survives a broken leg long enough for the bone to heal. A broken femur that is healed is evidence that someone has taken the time to stay with the one who fell, has bound up the wound, has carried the person to safety, and has tended the person through recovery. Helping every someone else through difficulty is where civilization starts. So... This is one of my very favorite quotes, and uh, it's just a really nice view of humanity. Um, and yes, I agree, this is where culture starts, but we also see similar things in Neanderthals. In many ways, Neanderthals were just like us. Unfortunately, we do see, you know, the term Neanderthal thrown around as an insult. Please stop that. Neanderthals were really cool. Don't disparage Neanderthals by using their name as an insult to a jerk, okay? But let's actually start to compare Neanderthals and modern humans. Even though in many ways they were similar, you can see there, there are diagnostic differences. So Neanderthal is you know, the much larger face. 
in general, Neanderthals are like bigger and beefier and we're, you know, a little bit more pathetic, physically speaking. Um, but let's specifically talk about the Levant. The Levant is the area of the Middle East, like right around the Mediterranean. Um, so really talking about Egypt, Israel, Jordan, and Syria. Um, and you can see on all these red dots here, these are different important fossil sites. Um, primarily right now we're talking about Israel. You can see there's a cluster of different important fossil sites. Um, apparently some of these are literal stone throws away from each other. Some of them are so close. Um, so let's talk about three sites, Kafsa, Amud, and School. Um, so Amud in the center, here is our Neanderthal. See that big face, really big nose in the center, no chin. Um, Kafsa and School, these are early modern humans. So what was going on in this Levant region is as the climate shifted a little bit, as it got a little bit warmer, early modern humans would come up from Africa and live in the Levant. When it got a little bit colder, then the early modern humans would go back down and then the Neanderthals would come and live in this Levant region. So it, there were actually overlapping sites of early modern human, Neanderthal, early modern human going. So there is kind of this alternation of occupation here. So this is one of the areas where it's possible that Neanderthals and early modern humans interacted with each other. Um, but usually um, when we're finding a fossil site, it's just early modern humans or just Neanderthals. Um, so here we can also look at some more differences. La Ferrisi is a, one of, a classic Neanderthal um, from France, and here we have a uh, Cro-Magnon. So you can see the Cro-Magnon um, has kind of this rounder um, cranium. Um, we still have the football heads going on in La Ferrisi here. Um, but since we're finding all of these similarities, and in many ways they are just so similar to us, one of the questions that's asked is, could they speak like us? It is, of course, very, very hard to look at language in the fossil record. Language does not fossilize. So we have to look at other things that relate to language. One of those things is the hyoid bone. That's your Adam's apple right here. This is a really cool bone. It's, it's the only bone in your body that actually doesn't directly attach to another bone. It is only connected to muscles and ligaments. It's kind of just like suspended here. Um, but it's the attachment for a lot of our tongue muscles. So its shape is interesting because our hyoid bone looks different from other apes. And Neanderthals, Neanderthals have a very modern looking one. Um, also, with the sequencing of the Neanderthal genome, they do have a modern FOXV2 gene. Um, this is associated with being able to produce speech because just think of all the complicated movements your tongue needs to be able to do to make all the sounds I'm making right now. Chimpanzees can't do that. So we do have a couple of um, changes in our genome that have allowed this to happen. And at least for this specific gene, Neanderthals have the same one that we do. So it's very, very hard to figure out exactly what's going on with language in the fossil record. But with the evidence we have, in my opinion, nothing rules out the possibility for language with Neanderthals. And I think it's highly likely that they had language just like we do. So can you explain who is Neander Homo neanderthalensis and when and where did they live?